raining, pouring rain. And today's a very special day because today's Friday and this is fish sell day where I sell to the shops and I sell to customers. So if any of you guys want any of the fish that you see in this fish room, comment down below if you guys live in Australia and I'll be selling these, any of them in the whole fish room. Um, to you guys, that is the longest poo I think I've ever seen. That poo literally goes neural under there, all the way up there, and then down and out there. Holy crap. Okay guys, so I just sold 14, well actually I sold 10 bristle nose babies, they're only about two centimeters for like 20 bucks, two bucks each. But um, just because a customer wanted some baby bristle noses, um, which I did have quite a few in stock, so that was all right to do. Um, but the thing is, a little tip for you guys, if you're ever selling fish to a pet shop or a customer, always give them one or two more, or even just give them a few more different, like a few more fish. If they order five, give them seven or something. Just in case some die, and it's always good for just customer service and things like that. Obviously, if it's things like L number placos, you don't because it's just so expensive. But for cheap fish like bristle nose or something like that, you always give them a couple more. Um, it's always good, makes customers happy, and always come back to you to buy fish. So that's a little tip for you guys. So now we're going to try and sell some fish to a pet shop and clear out a tank for some other different types of breeding ideas I've got. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So we, hang on, be better. So we're down back in the fish room again, and I just called up the shop and they, I've ordered some fish in, so I've got to catch a bunch of fish now and head off to the shops. And I'm probably gonna change over this bristle nose bucket into like a proper tank. So I've just gotta measure this real quick, see if I can fit the tank in there. If you're wondering why there's duct tape on it, it's because it's sucking air and it's, it makes it really noisy. But there's this little guy here, little creek dweller. So again, I'm gonna show you guys this tip for the shops as well. He's ordered 20 baby bristlenose fry, but I'm gonna probably put in about 24 maybe. Um, just an extra four bristlenoses or something like that. So I'm just gonna basically drain the water level quite a bit, do like a mini water change or something. And um, yeah, put it in some bags. I actually need to get some Oh, some, 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 some rubber bands today as well. So hopefully I can vlog, manage to get some rubber bands off the fish door somehow. We'll see how we go though. Guys, we literally got hundreds upon hundreds in here. Like, it's just crazy the amount of little guys in here. It's just nuts though. So we've already got three caught in here. There's even some in there. So we've got three albinos so far. We have a lot to go still. You can see that we've got some 397s and some 201s. So that's cool. So here we go. Got our fish. It's a small sale, but small sales, more small sales are still good sales. So off we go. Hell yeah. Looks as if they're doing a major road reconstruction on my road, so I had to wait quite a while. But we are driving there now. So we haven't dropped off the fish yet. We're just at Pet Barn. I think I need to get some food and stuff and then see if these guys have any in stock. But we still got the fish in the bag, so we do got to hurry a little bit. It's just pouring rain, but um, the other shop's just down the road, so we're gonna go get some food really quick. So a good thing I came here, the Tetra Colored Granules were only $34 instead of like $60, so that's pretty good. I'm here at the pet shop now. I don't think I'll film it or anything like that because it's kind of like, no, this kind of sounds weird, you know. But anyway, I'm gonna go in there and just have a look around, sort of some stuff I got.
I just said okay before the video started. Okay guys, so we just went and sold my fish to the shop and I've bought two new types of fish. I'll show you when I get home. I do actually have to go to Bunnings and get some equipment for the fish room and something for a washing machine because it's leaking. Did know they're a bit small, so I need to grow them out a bit more. So I'm gonna set up some tanks today as well and I've got just so much stuff going on. But literally like last week when I tried to come out of this driveway, it's really hard to get out of this place. But anyway, stay tuned for the rest of this vlog. Looks like they were still doing a lot of road work, so I had to wait at that lights for 10 minutes or so. But we're back home. So guys, these are, I think, I don't, I don't know how many exactly. I got these goiter rainbows to breed. Just up ant my production a little bit. So it looks like I've got four females and two males by the looks of it. So, so I've got these awesome rainbows. I'm going to get them soaking, acclimating now in this aquarium. I'm pretty sure. Let's hope that doesn't overflow with all that extra weight. I was kind of bummed because I was actually going to get neon precox rainbows, but I end up being the goiters instead because they're good size, um, ready for breeding, and I'd love to get them spawning in here. It's probably, honestly, not the most amazing aquarium for them because. There's a lot of other plants in there and they might end up spawning on the wrong material <laughs> not on the mop that I bought. But we also bought some of these dragon plecos which are a breeding pair here. Not really a breeding pair, just a male and female. Whoa, those fins! That's so cool. That's insane. I can't wait to breed these long fins. Just long fin common, they look like little dragons. Man, these guys are mad. Don't know if you can see them, but they're so cool. I don't know if I'll float them in there. And my are coming on, I can't say that yet. Maybe I can by the time this video is uploaded. My will probably already be here. Maybe this is in this vlog. Maybe this is after this vlog. Anyway, I haven't got yet in this video. Real funky stuff. But I'm gonna put these, um, these really cool bristlenose to amp up my production in my bristlenose tank down here. I'm going to start breeding some more bristlenoses. I need to grow out my bristlenoses just a little bit more. By the way, I'll show you something. I did get some tetra colour granules. Um, so I want to actually, let's have a look. Can't be bothered opening it. Anyway, they're colour granules. Let's just say that. They got 300 gram jar of that. I don't know how the heck to put the lid back on. But I also brought these boxes. I didn't think of the, I actually, I, they're plastic, but I don't know if they're like safe for aquariums. Should have thought of that before I bought them, if they're safe or not. It's not safe. So there's these bolts. Um, I'll make a video about it, but I'm basically gonna make little like baby raising boxes. That's why you measure things first. Okay, for all you sort of beginner people out there, here's a little trick, a little, tr a little trick. So when you get your bag from the shops and you first open it, you're gonna wanna, when you're acclimating them, scoop some of the water that's in your aquarium into there to just sort of adjust the pH. You can do this by drip acclimation and stuff, but it, I'll show you another way of doing it. It's really hard because the bag just does that and floats around the tank. So, what you want to gonna do? What you want? What you gonna want to do? How you say that? Is just roll the edges down on your bag like this. Not all the way down to water level because you're gonna be adding water to this. And it's gonna. That, but what it's going to do is create like an air pocket to f make sure the bag stays floating. You can't actually really sink it that easy. And then you get like a little um, better cup if you have one, or just a cup, just anything that carries water. And just scoop up some water and then pour it in just a little bit at a time every like five minutes, ten minutes, something. And then that actually can acclimate the fish a little bit faster. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there. The bag being in the tank is going to acclimate them to temperature wise and then you scooping the water and putting it into that bag is going to be pH um, acclimatizing and um, 
By the way, that's what my tanks look like at the moment. This one's a little bit different, but... So, yeah, that's how you can... That's a little tip. I don't know why I'm the gym. Oh, that sounded weird. Okay, so the fish room is so messy at the moment. It's just so messy. I can hardly walk anywhere. And as you can see, a lot of things are different. So now we've got a tank down here. I just unpackaged a brand new tank and put another one down underneath. Literally just fits. Like that touching that, touching that, touching that is exactly what I needed. And I moved everything down to it. Now you're not supposed to move fish into aquarium that's not cycled now this is a brand new tank it's not cycled at all but what i did to quick start this and i'll be doing daily water changes even on this tank just to ensure no ammonia spikes happen is i drained all that water put it down here drain some of that water put it down here They're basically the same water parameters pretty much same fish docking and all that kind of thing i put the same sponge filter down there same like ornaments and everything that has all the plants same just basically just moved everything from one tank to a different tank minus the gravel so um, i will lose a lot of bacteria there beneficial bacteria but it's a lot of it is still left in the sponge filter and sort of things like that so i think i'll be sweet i'm gonna drain some water out of this tank as well and put it into there just so to make sure i've got maximum beneficial bacteria in fact, I'm probably just even going to drain maybe a little. I always blow up my heaters by leaving them unsubmerged by draining them a little bit more. But we're not going to gain that much from it, really. It's probably more beneficial. But I also took a lot of plants out and I put heaps of new plants into my six foot tank. So as you can see, I've got Crips, Crips, the vowel that was already in there. Stop, try to stick some Java fern there. I've even got some wisteria and just more crypts and stuff so i was getting a bit of an overload as you can see in this tank as well but i'm going to leave this tank let it go a bit crazy see what happens and this tank i cleared out a lot of stuff still a lot of plants in there really um but just for the zebs that are coming and i'll do a bit of a gravel back um pretty soon as well so that's why i need to leave there's still a little bit of water in there but um yeah so that's what's happened so far the baby tank is still on the floor I didn't put the babies in that tank. I know I said I was going to do that, but I didn't. They're right here, and there's like hundreds of them still in there. Even though I took like nearly 30 of them out today, there's still like hundreds in there. Not so many albinos left, but there is still quite a few commons. They're a bit skinny. Probably not enough eating. I'm trying to try and fit that underneath there. Try. But um, the Goida Rivers are... Uh shaping up quite nicely there's seven of those five females two males um in with the two of ones hopefully i'll be able to get them to breed and also uh, i'm not sure why those guys are fighting he's like i'm not sure exactly there was a pit here that they dug and they kind of messed it up but yeah i've got to do a water change on all these tanks so i better stop talking and get to it i might do a fish room time lapse a lot of neons right there and of me cleaning up this massive mess. <laughs> 